This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the LG Optimus G Pro on AT&T. A lot of words to say right there, but suffice to say, this is their big new phone on AT&T. Literally, it's a 5.5-inch Android smartphone. It has a lot to offer, including a full HD display and the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 CPU. We're going to look at it now. So this is the LG Optimus G Pro, like the Optimus G in a way, but bigger. And instead of having that nice glass back, we have traditional Korean shiny plastic back going on here. No offense, but it's just Samsung and LG seem to just be in love with the shiny black plastics. A little bit of pattern going on, keep it a little visually interesting. And uh, Americans and Europeans particularly have been kind of picking on them for that. Available in indigo blue, which is a blue-black color. Uh, not a bad-looking phone, not a real complex-looking design, I have to say. Silver over here, um, straight edges. I would prefer straighter edges somewhat on the side to make it easier to grip, but I can understand why they contoured them so much. As you can see here, there's just a thin line right there uh, because it makes the phone visually look thinner and because it makes it a little easier to hold because, of course, this is a 5.5-inch phone. This is big. It's a little bit narrower than the Samsung Galaxy Note 2, which really can make the difference for holding it in your hand if you have a fairly large hand to start with. Anybody who has a small hand is probably going to find either of those phones kind of big and uncomfortable. We're going to show you this versus the Galaxy Note in a minute. I can tell you I had big hands, but I still find this just right as to what the limit is of holding comfortably. With the Note 2, much as I love my Note 2, it feels a little bit wider than what is really comfortable. We have a physical home button here that's also is surrounded by a multicolor LED. Every time you boot it up, you'll see it go through the whole rainbow of LED colors. Kind of keeps you entertained while you're waiting for it to boot up. And we have capacitive soft touch buttons right here. There's our back. There's our menu key. Pretty standard layout. This button has a lot of travel. Some people might find they have to kind of press, you know, press hard and press long to use it, but I'm not going to complain too much. Not a big deal. 2.1 megapixel camera up here, our earpiece. 5.5 inch IPS LG IPS display. They always make really lovely displays. Cannot fault them here. Very nice, very sharp looking screen. Not as uh, oversaturated and super duper in your face with lovely colors like the Samsung Galaxy phones are, but for those who prefer a more natural look, it's really quite nice. Also, they mess a little bit less with some aspects of Android, surprisingly, because there's a lot of customization here. And while most phones don't run in landscape mode, this one will run in landscape mode. As to whether that's useful, well, that's up to you. I don't know. I actually sometimes find it a little annoying because it's switching when I'm holding it in my hand, just because you get used to using it in portrait mode. And it also does the scrolling of the wallpaper so we can see our lovely BMW Z4 going by over here, whereas other phones pretty much just pick one stock clip now and keep it the same across all of your different home screens. Back to looking around the phone though, we've got our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up here, microphone hole. Volume controls are on the side right here, and this is a convenience button. Remember how BlackBerry used to have convenience keys? Same idea here. You can assign whatever application you want to be launched by this button. I've assigned camera. By default, they assign quick memo, but you can assign whatever you want to it. This side over here is the power button, so this is going to work out pretty well for you right-handed users who tend to hold the phone in your left hand, make it easy to control, and this little notch over here is where you grab the back to pull it off. Removable back, access to the battery, access to micro SD card slot, and your micro SIM card. We'll never complain about that. With the Samsung Galaxy phones, it's really easy to rip off that paper thin cover, and by the way, you can see how quickly this got grimy with fingerprints. This one takes a little bit more effort. You've got to work it around a little bit, keep pulling from the edges. Then you've got it off, and there it is. And there's your NFC plate here. It does have NFC like most higher end phones these days. 3140 milliamp battery. That's a nice beefy battery. You would expect a giant battery for a giant phone, and you do get it here. Micro SIM card slot, micro SD card slot for expandable storage. Good stuff right there. And you can see there's our speaker pretty well protected, even with the back off. And, of course, our 13-megapixel camera lens. That's the new thing for the, the latest phones, to have a 13-megapixel camera. We saw it in the Xperia Z and the Samsung Galaxy S4, and we've got it here, too, in our LED flash. And here's what my senior editor calls the battle of the bulge. Our two big 5.5-inch phablets right here, the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 and this being the Optimus G Pro, obviously. Uh, both of these are going to be large phones. The thing is that a little bit narrower right here, so... You can see when they're right on top of each other, there's a little bit extra. 
width there. And that can make all the difference. I suggest you go to the store and hold it in your hands if you're concerned about the size of the phone and the comfort. But you get the idea. Not too wildly different. Personally, I think the Samsung has a little bit more style. That, that's up to you to decide. Uh, Samsung's available in your choice of white or kind of a grayish plastic. And this is what they look like from the back. Of course, the Samsung's big claim to fame is the digital S Pen that it has. This does not have it, the Optimus. We're going to have a smackdown of these two guys, so don't you worry about it if you're having trouble deciding between the two of them. And now we have it next to the Samsung Galaxy S4. And isn't this funny, the 5-inch Samsung Galaxy S4, wow, it feels like kind of diminutive in my hand, to be honest. And there's a difference in the size right there, superimposed, you can see. Not hideous, it won't look immense until you put the iPhone 5 in front, so let's just do that right now. So here is our iPhone 5 side by side. Looks like something that you got in the cereal box as a gift in comparison to this, doesn't it? It just looks like really teeny. Not to say the iPhone 5 is a toy, it is an awesome product. It just looks, well, miniaturized. And here we have them on top of each other. So if you are using an iPhone, you're wondering what the size difference is going to be like, there's going to be a big change in hand. Now you might be thrilled if you were really, really hoping for, you know, a whole lot more screen real estate, but otherwise. And lastly, we have it next to the HTC One, the pretty aluminum guy. 4.7 inch display, but it's about the same size as the 5 inch Galaxy S4, so in the ballpark of big phones right there. Both of these using LCD displays, IPS-like technology with the LCD3 on the HTC One, so similar displays. Still, you can see that the Optimus G Pro is a little bit cooler in its colors. The oranges don't pop as much, and the blue tones are accentuated a bit more. And in the back view, that's where we start to get, well, wildly different, because you've got this aluminum unibody design going on with the HTC versus the pattern black gloss plastic of the Optimus. Speaking of IPS, and that means wide viewing angles. As you can see right here, flat, funny angle right here, other than the little glare it's picking up. But you can see how nicely the screen still shows up, even at this indirect an angle. It's a really nice looking display. Again, it, it is going to depend when you're picking your phone how, how much you like really vibrant warm tones, if you want the super saturated color, that kind of thing. But honestly, this is really, really nice. Full 1080p, 1920 by 1080 in 5 inches. So you're talking about very high pixel density. And that's one of the places where it, it kicks the poor Galaxy Note 2's little rear end, I have to say, because that one has considerably lower resolution than this. It also has a fast CPU inside, as with the latest generation phones we've seen with the HTC One and the Samsung Galaxy S4. We have a 1.7 GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 CPU. Samsung Galaxy S4 actually upset to 1.9 GHz, but it benchmarks about the same as the 1.7 GHz on the, on the HTC One, so we're not going to get too picky about the 200 MHz difference. Anyway, latest generation, you thought that quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro was pretty hot in December. Boy, a lot has changed in just four months, hasn't it? So this is the latest, greatest CPU in here. Very fast, very fluid. Two gigs of RAM, so plenty of RAM to, to run all your applications. Uh, it steps up to the plate with 32 gigs of storage, which is pretty nice compared to the Samsung Galaxy phones that start with 16 gigs of storage. And with all the preloaded software and stuff that's on these guys, you know, you get less than what it says. So if your 16 gig phone only has 9 gigs free, you get the idea. So this guy has about 22, 23 gigs free. That's important for you folks who particularly like to play 3D games because those take up a lot of space and they have to be installed on internal storage. They can't be installed on SD cards. So, for, the, for you folks, it makes a difference. Um, for those of you who don't download a lot of 3D games, which can be 2, 3 gigs each, even more sometimes, less of an issue there. Speaking of speed, the phone does well on benchmarks. It doesn't do quite as well as the HTC One and the Galaxy S4. That's been a continuing theme with LG, too. Their weak points are often battery life and not getting quite the same synthetic benchmark results that some of the competitors do using the same CPU. It's still very good news here. Their quadrant was 11,994. Um, in comparison, the HTC One the Galaxy S4 is scored in the t low to mid 12,000, so just a little different there. On 2.2 is 18,561. We saw 20,000 to 24,000 on the competitors there. Again, synthetic benchmarks are synthetic benchmarks, but if a phone feels and is fast and runs everything that you want, keep it in mind, you know. GL Benchmark 2.7, the Egypt HD 2.5 test, 29 frames per second on screen, 28 frames per second off screen. 
Geekbench 2, 2216, which is a good showing, but not as amazing as the Samsung Galaxy S4, which is the fastest so far in Geekbench 2 for a phone at 3,230. In comparison, the HTC One scored 2,637, so again, a little bit lower on this guy here. And on Sun Spider, it scored a very respectable 867, where lower numbers are better, and the 800s are where the best phones are today, so good times. Speaking of Sun Spider, which measures JavaScript performance, we have both the standard WebKit browser on board, and we have Chrome, so you have both web browsing options available. Flash is not pre-installed, so I side-loaded it, and it works just fine with the built-in WebKit web browser. So for those of you who care about Flash, keep that in mind. In terms of UI enhancements, this is LG's Optimus UI, and uh, it reminds me a lot of TouchWiz, sorry to say, but it's a little bit more toned down than that. A lot of the customizations they do, though, I actually find are pretty useful. For example, you've got the drop-down here of quick access to your wireless radios, your GPS, your sound, airplane mode, screen rotation on and off, quick remote, which we'll talk about a little bit more. It's your TV AV remote control, and their quick memo application. And you've got Q-Slide apps as well. And QSlide apps, you can see there's only these four that are here, which is too bad. The overseas version is supported even more apps, but this is a little floating versions of your applications. can be pretty handy. So say we want to get our notepad up. I do that. And now we've got, here's the guide that tells you how to use it. And now we've got our notepad up, and there's a transparency slider as well. So if you do that, you can start interacting with other things and then bring that transparency slider back up. And if you want another application floating. You can get another application floating. And we'll talk, turn off that reminder so we don't need an explanation. And here we have a floating video player as well. And you can do the same thing with the transparency and you can resize this too. So tap on that and there's my resize grab. I've obviously reached maximum width. This is probably one of the reasons why they do support landscape mode for the home screen though because if it's something like a video you might want to get even bigger. Like so. And that's a video actually taken with the camera. Audio recording is particularly good with that. I like that. So that's what QSlide is. And when you're done with your little QSlide apps, you can close them up. And we've seen Quick Memo before. It just basically grabs your screen. See, you think you're looking at the desktop now, but you can see these extra tools up here. Whatever screen you're in, when you pull that down, you can start writing and circling things, taking notes. Say you're in the phone dialer and you want to write down an address that somebody gave you, you can do that and you can save it. And you've got erase tools and sharing tools and all that kind of thing here. The phone runs Android 4.1.2 Jelly Bean. Uh, that's not quite the latest greatest, which is 4.2.2, but we're not going to complain too much about that. It's a stable release. It's fairly new. And I, when I say that, this reminds me of Samsung. Let's just take a look a little bit. Uh, just like Samsung, instead of having the single monolithic list of scrolling settings right here, we've got four tabs. One for network, one for sound, one for display. They're dividing things up a little bit differently here, but you get the idea. And you can see, look at these little cutesy toggle switches, 3D, artsy little things here. So they're having fun here customizing the UI a little bit and making things look a little bit pretty. We have quiet time, so you can actually set the phone to be well, quiet at night if you want to do that. Notification settings, all that standard stuff right there. Network selection is what you would expect. Here's our screen, brightness lock screen. Smart screen is like smart stay for Samsung, and it's going to use the front camera to keep an eye on you, and it's going to not turn the screen off if you're looking at it. It doesn't flash the little camera icon at you like Samsung does to let you know that's keeping an eye on you, but trust me, it is. And you can disable screen rotation like on any phone, and you can choose your font. Just like Samsung, again, they like to offer you a bunch of fonts, so we have a whole lot of fonts, some of them fanciful, some of them more normal, Roboto being the standard Android font, but they go with LG Gothic, and you can choose your font size. Home screen, screen button LED, you can turn that on and off. And Quick Cover, they make a flip cover that's like the smart covers on, on the iPhone and the iPad. Basically, you flip open the cover and it turns the screen on. You close the cover and it turns the screen off. That's pretty neat. And then we have even more settings right here. This is your battery stuff, your application storage, all the normal things. We have gestures as well. Uh -huh. 
So you can move home screen items just by tilting the phone. I've always been deranged by that. I don't turn that on. You might want to use that. Silence incoming calls, snooze alarms, and pause video by taking the phone and putting it face down. And we have LG's usual cutesy animations. We have this uh, collection of AT&T applications that's pre-made for us. Uh, I don't really want that, so tap and hold. And here's our cute little garbage can man that appears to say we're going to get rid of that. Makes a sound, closes the trash bin door. Uh, it also has a sound that's not unlike Samsung's little water effect. When we turn it on, we turn it on, we get our lock screen, which is pretty useful right here. And hear that sound? And see how it shows a little bit of my desktop right there, which is kind of fun and interesting. Maybe not the best thing for security, but I don't keep anything that worrisome. And that's how we unlock it there. You can actually set the amount of time after it goes to sleep, by the way, before it actually locks the screen requires you to do the swipe again. And for those shortcuts that we saw, you can customize the shortcuts that were on the lock screen too. So a lot of customizability here, uh, but all in all, the UI is not too in your face and it doesn't seem to bog the phone down. So I like it. LG is doing a good job here. And here we have the dialer living large because this is a very big phone. By the way, there's also software settings you can use to set it to either shrink this and move it either to the left or the right side depending on which hand you prefer so to make it a little bit easier when you're using the keyboard and you can do this do the same thing with the typing kind of keyboard too which is swipe based but anyway big on-screen dialer right here the usual access to your call logs your contacts your favorites call quality on the phone has been very good for us so as reception it's been on par with the HTC One and the Galaxy S4 nice good dynamic range I, people feel sound like they're you know it's not like a little tinny or anything like that nice rich voice definitely a nice voice phone in terms of data speeds by the way you can see our customized launcher here it gives us a little translucent view of our desktop separated between apps and downloads widgets as you like we'll take that shortcut and we'll run a speed test right now And that's actually one of the lower results that we've gotten so far. We'll show you some other results in a minute that we've gotten with the phone. And here are some other recent results. You can see we got as fast as 25 megabit per second down. And that was only with a 92 dB signal, which isn't super duper strong. It'll show three to four bars on the phone at that point. So, very good data speeds, certainly impressive. Sits between the HTC One and the Galaxy S4 in terms of data speeds that we've seen on the phone. Experientially, the web browser feels fast. Uh, it's a very fast phone, and also data speeds are very good. We'll use the WebKit web browser first. You can see we were just running our Sun Spider tests there last, and we'll visit our own website. And you can see the customized keyboard, and this is a swipe like keyboard, so you can swipe if you want to. It loads up nice and fast, and that was not cached, by the way. Obviously, big screen, a lot easier to see things without zooming, but zoom is very fast, very responsive, no problems with that. And we have installed Flash Player, as I said, so even Flash Banner ads are going to be loading, and it plays just fine. And let's look at one of our own videos so we can see how it plays YouTube video. Speakers on the back. It's fairly loud. It's really the loudest if you turn it around and face it at you, which is probably not what you're going to want to do if you're, well, watching a video. Can't compete with the HTC One with boom sound, but it, it certainly competes well with the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. So here we are playing one of our own videos. Fairly clear terms of audio and we're using Adobe Flash Player to do it which I actually would not recommend doing unless you need to because it's still a little bit hard to control those itsy little controls down there full screen mode on this is a little bit picky sometimes it just goes to full screen and shows you a black screen it takes a long time for it to actually spool up but if you're going to use something like congregate to play games or services like Amazon instant video where it's your only choice well it's nice to have it on board but wait there's more See this icon right here? Quick remote. What would a modern flagship smartphone be without an AV remote control? 
So here it's going to walk us through. You pick your room. You know, living room is the default. That makes sense to me. You press, press the plus sign. And you can control all of this kind of stuff. doesn't have to be LG brand. works pretty well. So you can get all of your remotes set up. Now this is for controlling all of your AV gear remotes. This does not have any content discovery like the Galaxy S4 or the HTC One that have Peel based smart remote applications that do both AV control and content discovery. So your cable provider probably has a TV grid you can download anyway and find out that kind of stuff. It's up to you whether you really enjoy the content discovery. I find the recommendations aren't that useful anyway or if you really just want to be able to control everything with your lovely touchscreen universal remote. And the IR window is up top here, just this little window right there. And now we're going to check out Real Racing 3, a big 5.5 inch display, really fun for gaming here. And this is a very demanding 3D game, so we're going to go for it. Now we're going to go down the initial course. You see we got a rear view mirror action going on right here. Really nice display. And the speaker is pretty well placed, I'm not covering it with my hand. Control is good, frame rate's good, even with that many cars on the screen. Something that could bog it down. Really, really, very nice performance, as you'd expect from the Qualcomm 600. So that's real racing free on the LG Optimus G Pro. So how about the camera on this big bad boy? 13 megapixel camera right here, LED flash has HDR, backside illuminated sensor. Now we saw a 13 megapixel camera on some versions of the LG Optimus G, not the G Pro. Uh, but I have to say that this has improved over that camera, which was a good camera, but it wasn't, wow, the best camera I've ever seen. Definitely some improvements here. Let's take a look at it right now. We're going to hit our dedicated button to launch our camera app, and here we are. We'll get our favorite buddy, the bath toy, ready. Right now, the UI looks pretty simple because we're in intelligent auto mode. And somehow, that when I say that, that triggers the voice command. Now, you can take pictures just using your voice, which might seem like a gimmick, but with a phone this big, it's easy to barn door when you hit it and make it move a little bit. So it can be useful to say things. And you can say kimchi, cheese, whiskey. Don't ask me why. That, that's built in there, that feature. And a couple of other words. Well, it might seem a little snap happy once in a while there. You might get an extra shot or two when you're doing that. In some words, really, I don't know why it's snapping, but it's not a pervasive problem. Again, you might get a couple of pictures. Anyway, you can see right there, there's that icon. You can switch back and forth. If you turn off intelligent auto mode, then you get access to a whole lot more settings over here, including scene settings. We have panorama, HDR mode, VR panorama, burst shot, and beauty shot. Not as many settings and modes and, and fun things like fisheye and, and motion effects that you get on the Galaxy S4 and on the HTC One, but certainly enough to take a lot of nice pictures. And here we have Cheese Shutter, which is the thing that we've been using to take pictures with, just using our voice, and we can turn that off. Flash Control, Brightness, Focus Mode, give you a choice of Manual, Face Tracking or Auto right there, various scene modes as you would expect, White Balance, so plenty of stuff going on there, and you can customize your little bar here as you see fit and add stuff. And that's our slider between camera and video, and obviously that's our on-screen shutter button and quick access to the gallery where we can see many, many pictures of our bath toy. Uh, trust me, there's a lot of shots of here that are more interesting than the bath toy, so I'll just go through those. And by the way, notice that maximum resolution is a 4 by 3 aspect ratio here. When you're shooting video, it's, it's widescreen. Now if you drop the resolution down a bit, then, well, you're done. So here's a shot taken in very low light. You probably wouldn't guess it though. It looks pretty nice. This has pretty decent low light shooting capabilities of our guy who's the head of our office right here at Mobile Tech Review. And even as I zoom in, the detail is quite good, which is nice because well, it really was a quite dark room. Outdoors, nice pretty pool shots. Video that you saw already playing in the floating player. It does a little hyper saturation of colors, particularly blues. Some people probably will find that pleasing. I would like accuracy more, but a lot of people like those colors. Capturing a waterfall, 
did a really good job there. So it's a good camera, and check out the flower. I mean, really, really very nice. I took the same picture with my Samsung Galaxy S4, and this one actually did a better job of not blowing out the highlights and capturing a little bit more lifelike colors. In that respect, it did well. Otherwise, I would say these cameras are often neck and neck in terms of quality, which you're going to get. But nice camera in the end, and also good for shooting video. And lots of detail here you can see, and no whiteout on the rocks here, which is often a problem when we shoot our little Buddha, surrounded by different dark things and a couple of light things. Lastly, there's battery life. 3140 milliampere hour battery. Well, that's a lot of juice to have in a phone at 6.1 ounces. You'll feel that battery in there a bit, but it's not too, too heavy. Um, we're still testing the battery right now. It looks like it's going to be pretty good. I'm not sure it's going to outlast our Samsung Galaxy Note, though, which is generally a real energizer bunny. So that's the LG Optimus G Pro. It's available now on at and It's $199 with contract, and I'm really proud of LG. They've done a lot of good stuff here. It used to be all their phones were good, but there was always some kind of really important caveat. Now with this one, everything is just really nice. If you're looking for a real big phone, don't need the pen that the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 offers, definitely take a look at it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.